What if you could alter an image without masking any area? Just a simple text prompt which the AI understands to perform the desired change to your image. That's now possible with Muse AI. Its architecture enables out-of-the-box zero-shot capabilities such as in-painting, out-painting and mask-free image editing, a unique feature to this text-to-image generator. Let's get right into it and check out the amazing zero-shot mask-free editing capabilities of this AI. This is possible due to the iterative resampling of picture tokens based on a text prompt. Last year was a big one for generative AI models like Midjourney and Dell E2. While they are brilliant, they don't have the capability of mask-free editing built into the model and they can also not be deployed at scale due to their compute cost and efficiency. Whereas Muse can generate 512 by 512 images in 1.3 seconds, no other text-to-image generator can produce high-quality images at this record speed. It outperforms the previous fastest system, Stable Diffusion 1.4, which had a generation time of 3.7 seconds. With such efficiency, AI applications can soon scale to billions of users with compute cost roughly the same as a search result today. The image quality is not as good as Imagine and Midjourney, but this model has unique capabilities. Let's see what it can do when we edit an image with a masking area. Here, we're masking the upper half of this image. We can have San Francisco in the background, or New York, or Paris. Editing is fast because it's done on the low-res model, and then the result is converted to high-res. This is another brilliant example of in-painting. Here, we've masked the buildings in the background. If you want hot air balloons, not a problem. We could even put a giant inflatable duck in there, and it just looks perfect. And we could even have a futuristic, streamlined, modern building. Let's test its outpainting capabilities. We highlight the skater in this image. Let's move him from the beach to the London skyline. Or perhaps near a wildflower bloom at Mount Rainier. Not sure how he jumped so high there, but why not? Let's take him where no other skater has gone before, onto the rings of Saturn. And why not look at another example, let's move this gazebo from this garden to a lake during the fall season. Just how good is that? With tools like this, you won't need Photoshop anymore. It's so well done. Unlike Imagine, Muse doesn't use diffusion. Instead, it uses compressed, discrete tokens, allowing it to be more efficient, and it requires fewer sampling iterations. To be more efficient than autoregressive models like Party, it uses parallel encoding. This architecture allows a smaller sample size, resulting in high-quality images produced in a second. It's a 3 billion parameter model, trained on 460 million text-to-image pairs from Imagine. To understand its text input, it uses T5XXL, a frozen 4.6 billion parameter large language model. Unlike other image generators, Muse fully processes a text prompt rather than focusing only on specific important words. This results in high fidelity image generation and an understanding of visual concepts such as objects, spatial relationships and pose. Let's look at a few examples that show how well this AI understands spatial concepts. Three elephants standing on top of each other. I'm sure you've never seen that before. Or perhaps four wine bottles? This is a great example because other models find difficulty producing images like this. Tiny football in front of three tennis balls. It produces that perfectly with the spatial representation being spot on. A large present with a red ribbon to the left of a Christmas tree. Two baseballs to the left of three tennis balls. Now this is no small feat, look how perfectly it's drawn all of these five things that we asked it to draw. Let's test it a bit more, a t-shirt with carpe diem written on it. A high contrast image of the word wombat written with thick colored graffiti letters on a white wall with dramatic splashes of paint. Let's discuss the architecture of this model. The text encoder generates a text embedding that is used for cross-attention with image tokens for both base and super-res transformer layers. The base model uses a VQ tokenizer that is pre-trained on lower resolution images and generates a 16 by 16 latent space of tokens. 
This sequence is masked at a variable rate per sample, and then the cross entropy loss learns to predict the masked image tokens. Once the base model is trained, the reconstructed lower resolution tokens and the next tokens are passed into the super res models that then learns to predict masked tokens at a higher resolution. Before we look at the super res model in more detail, check out this example of prompt based editing. A man is wearing a simple black t-shirt outside a building. If we prompt a man wearing a blue t-shirt with hello world written on it, we get the exact result we desired. No masking needed and even the background is perfect. Let's change it a little more. Here the background did change which is not the result we were after but still great overall. And why not have a woman standing in a dress? Perfect again. In the super resolution model, low resolution tokens are passed into a series of self-attention transformer layers and the resulting output embeddings are concatenated with text embeddings extracted from the conditioning text prompt. Following this, cross-attention is applied from these concatenated embeddings to the masked high resolution tokens. The lost learns to predict these masked tokens conditioned on the low resolution and text tokens. On the right are shown two examples of the improvement brought about by the super resolution model. The use of VQ tokenizer here is very interesting. It encodes an input image to a sequence of discrete tokens as well as decodes a token sequence back to an image. In Muse, the encoder and decoder are fully convolutional to support different image sizes. See especially that fine details such as the house number on the bottom left of the image, the storefront sign in the middle and the bars on the windows on the right are preserved perfectly in the fine-tuned decoder. Before we compare the results with other text-to-image generators, let's look at a few more editing examples as I just cannot get enough of this capability. So let's take this cat and turn it into a dog. Or perhaps this cat and, I don't know, maybe turn it into a brown rabbit? Perfect. So let's change this image of the Haddon Cross Station to Bond Street. This was a great example of one limitation of this model. As you can see, initially we had Haddon Cross written at the top and also in the middle of the sign. Here we got the Bond Street in the middle of the sign, but the top bit just makes no sense. Let's turn this cat into a Shiba Inu. Okay, it's not a good day for cats today, is it? Or perhaps this dog holding a basketball. Instead, let's have him hold a football in his mouth. Let's take this cat and um, let's make it a bit more sleepy. Perfect. Let's take this vase and turn it into red roses. Okay, a few white ones in there, but it's aesthetically pleasing, so I give it full marks there as well. So far, this model's going great. It's much more efficient and faster than both DAL E2 and Imagine. But let's compare the quality of the images produced, because after all, this is the most important thing for anybody who's trying to use a text to image generator. Now, I don't know about you, but I prefer Imagine a lot more than DAL E2, and Muse is very very close to both of these, but it's obvious to see that we've gained efficiency but lost a little bit of quality along the way. Hopefully they can fix that in the future, but the results are very promising and it's very close. Which images do you prefer the most? Is it Imagine? Is it Muse? Is it Party or some other AI? Post down in the comments below. From the examples that I found in the research paper, this was the biggest limitation, as we had the Bond Street example before. Here you can see that the text, I see what you did there, is kind of mangled up. Perhaps it was too many words for the model? Its positioning of the text is also unintuitive. Before we saw an example where the model was able to show four wine bottles side by side without a problem. But when we increase the number to 10 wine bottles, it generates a weird distortion in the middle of the image. The bottles are not the same size and overall are shown in a very bad way. Clearly there are a lot of limitations to overcome. And finally, in this game of basketball between a team of four cats and a team of three dogs, I don't even know what to say. What happened to the cat on the right? It's clearly, this is just too much for this AI. Thank you for hanging around till the end. Please leave a comment on how I can improve. I appreciate your feedback very much. See you all next time.